Welcome back to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be playing with the tracker node, and we're going to be tracking objects and text from a video source file. So it should be a lot of fun. This is a very powerful tool and probably one of the reasons you're wanting to use Natron. Something important to learn. So first, we're going to bring in uh, some video footage that we can track. So I'm going to go to Firefox, and we're going to go to Pixabay. It's pixabay.com. And instead of searching for images, I want to search for a video, like a free video that I can use. And I'll type in bike. So this is a video I found earlier. There's all these different footage that we could use that has movement in it. You could use to stabilize. You can use a tracker node to stabilize footage or to track and follow an object or both. So the footage I want to use is this one right here. It's just, it's on a tripod. So it's just, we're only going to be tracking movement. We don't have to worry about shaky cam or stabilization. So this is just gonna be a very basic tracking project. So we, this is a good video. So we're gonna click here on free download and then download the size you want. So it only is a, a 720 is the maximum resolution. So it doesn't have 1080p, which is just fine for us. So go ahead and download that. I already have it downloaded. You'll notice under the license, it's free for commercial use. There's no attribution required. So just a completely free video that this awesome person has uploaded and decided to share with us. Um, so I have this video downloaded. It's in my downloads folder. And it's right here. We can watch it on my computer in my video player. If we left click and drag it into our project, it just appears right in here. Another way that we can add it in is by going to the read nodes and creating a read node and then navigating to that location on our computer where it is, which is in my downloads folder. I'm using Windows. Might be somewhere else on your computer. So now it's connected into our viewer. We can hit play and we can watch this. So first of all, it's pretty long and I don't want it to be that long. So I'm gonna change the frames, not up here in what we're reading in, but I'm just gonna change it down here in our project settings. We'll make it 50 frames long only. So now it should just play those 50 frames and then loop and just keep looping those same 50 frames over and over again. Perfect. Something else we want to look at is the frame rate of this video is 29.97 frames per second. So every second it's playing nearly 30. It's going to flash 30 pictures before our eyes to create this movement illusion. But our video project is set up right now for 24 frames per second. So if we create anything else, if we were to import like a different object, uh, or some text and try to merge it with this, we're going to get an error message. In fact, I'll just show you how that works real quick. So while the video is selected, if we create a merge node, because we're going to need this for our project anyway, we make this the background. And then we want to merge in, let's say, some text. And we try to bring the text into our video project. We get an error message. It says, you're trying to merge text that has been generated at 24 frames per second, since that's our project, but you're trying to merge it with a video at 29.97 frames per second. So it's just not gonna, I mean, it'll work actually, but uh, we get a little yellow dot, uh, dot here telling us we have an error. A stream issue is what it's calling it um, because it's different frame rates of the video. So to fix that anyway, we just need to go down to our project and make sure that it matches the same as our video input, 29.97. So we change the frame rate, and now we won't have that issue. If we break this pipe and try to reconnect it, now it just connects up, everything's fine, and everything will be awesome. So we have this text on our video now. If we click the button here, we can um, go forward frame by frame. We can change, if we double click the text, we can change what it's called. So let's call this uh, bike guy. Oops, and hit enter. And then as soon as we click in here, it'll update it. So this says bike guy. And if we play the video, it just says bike guy right in the middle. So it, it thinks this wants to be a title. So maybe we could like put it up top here and be like bike guy, which maybe is the, you know, sometimes you want a, a title to stay right in the middle of your video. But what we really want it to do is follow along with him. So if we come back here, oh, I froze for a second there. So if we want this to follow him, maybe we want to put it like right here. And every time he moves forward, if we want it to move, kind of track with him, that's probably an effect that you've seen before used in videos. It's kind of a cool thing. So, but what we're doing now, we're, everywhere we move this, it just moves and stays there for our video. So 
one way we could we're going we're going to be using the tracker node to accomplish this but i just want to show that we could do this using skills that we've already learned by just coming over here and going set keyframe all on the location of this text and manually moving it over to follow this bike guy and so now what i'm actually doing is creating a keyframe at every one of these manually then if we click back now it's following him but it's not we're not using the tracker node we're not tracking him we're just manually moving the text which is a tedious way to do it we have 50 frames if you're if you're working with thousands of frames you have to go through every one manually and move this text manually very tedious very time consuming so there's a much faster way to do that i'm going to select this node the text node and hit the delete key we'll delete that and let's bring in a tracker node so the tracker nodes are here we click on these this, these tools and go down to tracker and then we have a tracker node it's not connected to anything we want the source to be our our video here but i'm not going to do it just yet i want to show you that you can use this tracker even with it when it's not tied to anything so let's we can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and a good point that i'm going to choose to track is the his his ear we have the ear and a nice contrast between the helmet and his head stays pretty constant like in the same place relative to him and the bike that with this tracker we see the properties over here so some of the different options for it and we see some new tools appear at the very top of the viewer with this tracker that weren't there before so this very very first button on this new toolbar is called add track let's left click it and it creates a little green plus sign and now we can create a new point to track on this uh, video footage so if I just click over here we're tracking this these trees I guess so we have a, a new track one appears and while this is still selected if I click again it'll create another track a completely separate track and that square disappears and now we have track two if I click his helmet we have another track so we have three different points that we're tracking on this one video but you know we're only gonna I do that to show you because that's probably something that you'll that might confuse you in the future but go ahead and click the track and hit this minus key let's delete these tracks delete all three of those we'll come back and add another track here or click this add track button and we're just going to click right in the middle of his ear and we have just a single track so just know that if we were to click anywhere else right now even if it's just barely off in here it'll create a second track which we don't want to do we only want to work with one track in this video so make sure you always only have one track showing in this table so this is perfect this is showing right in the middle of his ear we have this box here we have this bigger box here which we'll adjust in a little bit but for right now just on this frame everything is pretty good where it needs to be so we're going to click the forward frame button we'll go to the next frame and we see the box stays back there basically stays right where we put it but the subject has moved in our video so now we want to move this so clicking right in the center of this dot left clicking and moving we're just going to move that over to his ear and we see it's created this gray line and now if we go back and forth we see between these two frames which are frames right next to each other we've created two tracking points we have these triangles down here showing us that we have tracking points created if we do if we do a third one we can just move go forward and move so this is sort of this is just as tedious as the text example I gave you earlier we're still manually tracking every point but it, it can be done and sometimes you'll need to manually track like this so now we have these points that we can track we can go backwards and we can move so now we've got four points that we've manually created and again if you mess up like I, I did this a lot when I was first starting and I do it sometimes still if we go back and we instead of tricking uh, clicking and dragging and moving we just click on his ear it thinks we want to create a new track so now none of those are associated with this new one and we have track one here and track two here and it gets kind of confusing so just make sure whenever you're tracking a point that the, the, the track the name of that track track one is always what you're working with now, don't ever create new points when you're just trying to track a single point okay so now we have this we can see he's moving forward we have this line and what this gray line is is the line that we can map our text to or map any object to so that it will follow this line um, but 
Um, I told you I, I was going to show you a faster way to, to do this tracking than just doing it manually. So let's go ahead and just delete this tracking data, delete all of it, and let's come here to this frame that we're on. We'll add a new tracking point, and for this, what we need to do is make this outside box um, larger. We need to make it like almost like twice as large, so a, a good point there. So this is just get, t giving the tracker information on all the pixels around so it can look and get kind of a good reference point. If this box is too small, sometimes you want it smaller because you don't want to get confused, but if it's too small in this case, um, it's, we're not, it's, not going to, it's not going to be able to automatically track for us. So we need to make it bigger like this. Then what we want to do is just click these blue buttons. So we have just like the play buttons down here, we have them in blue up here. And if you hover over, it'll tell you what it does. It'll actually track to the next node. So if we just hit track, it's going to hopefully track forward for us. But you know what? It's not doing it. So that tells us we might have an issue with this. We might need to resize this box a little bit and see if we can track, get it to track automatically for us. Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit here. Let's go back. Let's start tracking over here instead. So I'm going to hit here. Let's make this larger and then hit track forward. Oh, okay. This is good. I'm glad that I did this. Is I made a stupid mistake, but I'm glad I did because it's something you might make too. So we never did tie this um, tracker to our video. So our viewer is showing us the video, and we can technically this tracker should be into our viewer in order for us to see these points. But so we're trying to track nothing. This tracker is is seeing this. It's seeing black. And so when I'm hitting track, I'm trying to tell it to track to watch the video and automatically follow it, and it can't do it because there's nothing to follow. It's just blackness is what the view is what the tracker's seeing. So we need to tie this into the video. Now we've got this source. All right, so now we'll keep our box. Uh, yeah, I guess that's a good size. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. So now we have this box, and now if we hit track forward, it goes to the next track and it automatically creates this gray line and moves to the next. It automatically tracks it for us. So I'm not having to click and drag and move. It's automatically doing it when I click this uh, forward frame yeah, up here instead of down here. If I click the next one, it's going to track through all the way forward as, as far until I tell it to stop. So I'll do that. Look at that. It tracked all the way to the end. So now if we go back, To this frame and we can hit backwards we can track all the way backwards so now it's tracked all the way backwards so this by drawing this box around natron is looking at all the different pixels around this box and it's figuring out where that point is without us having to tell it every frame so what we've just done is created a single track a single point to track in this video so now if we go back to the very beginning of this video and play we see it is doing what we want to do. It's tracking him. It's, this box is staying around and finding out where he is at, which is super cool. Now, how do we use this data? So it's tracking, but kind of the hard part is, harder part is actually getting it to apply to an object properly. So we have different options here. We have this transform tab. If we left click on it, it um, gives us some options for this tracker. So right now, all we've done is created a point. We've successfully um, tied the tracker to our source video and it's been able to, to create tracking points but this tracker doesn't know what it's what it's really trying to do so what we want to do is tell it okay the motion type here is going to be not stabilization which is like if you have shaky footage we're going to do match move so we want to match the movement of this uh, of the subject in the video and then over here for transform type we, sh we want it to go to transform because we have a single point. Um, so now we have some information here and we're just going to keep everything the same. So the only thing we're changing is this translate X and Y. So this, the, because that's the only thing really moving in this is this point. So it's blue. So it's, it's telling us there's a keyframe and we're basically moving this point um, is, is the only thing that's happening right now. We're not doing skew. We're not doing like blur. We're not doing any of this stuff. We're just doing transform. And then we hit export. 
I just left click the export key and look what happened. It exported a transform node for us. So remember in other videos we've used these transform nodes to change like the shape of something or to change where it's at on the screen. Well now we have a transform node here that we can use. And so we're going to actually just put this right in to our merge node. And then we need a source to go into this transform node. And this is sort of getting messy a little bit. But so now let's get in, let's bring in our text. So we go to the draw node. Let's bring in some text again. We don't want it to be tied to the tracker node. We want it to be the source of this transform, this new transform we created. Because this transform is a very special transform. We see it has this little E reference here. If we hover over, it says this node has one or several expressions involving values, parameters. What it's telling us is it's got this green line here, and the data for this transform is coming from this tracker. And the data for this tracker was sourced from this video. So we can kind of see how that works. Um, we have our text here. So let's we'll change text again, and we'll call it Byte Guy, like we did last time. And then we'll left click here to update that. So now we have our text, we have Byte Guy, and now just because this text is into this transform, now if we move, it'll follow with it. If we change the frame, so that's following along with it, albeit you know, further forward than we probably want it to be. So we could click and move this now, but if we do, notice what our cursor is telling us. We have that green plus sign. We're still working with the nodes, even though we're the viewer is what's selected, we are still on the node tool. So we need to left click and unclick that so that we get just a regular cursor. Otherwise, we would accidentally create another, another node layer. So now we can move this over here, maybe move it to like right up there or yeah, right there. And now we've got this text following our biker, which is really following a point. And there we have it. So that is mapping text to a video. And again, you can do this differently too. If we had shaky footage, sometimes you'll see like in the, you know, someone will be walking through a house and they'll be like, these points will come out and like identify a certain objects in the room with the, with the text. So maybe we'll do a video like that. But I'll probably end this here. This video is getting a little bit longer. And it's just, I want it to be kind of as, as simple as, as I could make it. Um, watch some of my other, we'll do another tracking one in the next couple videos. So watch some of the other ones and kind of play around and just make sure you get familiar with it. You really got to play with it just a little bit to figure out that interaction between the tracker and then creating the transform node. Again, to do that, it's on this transform tab. So while the tracker is selected, you go to the transform tab. We have to make sure this is match move because by default it was on none. And you have to make sure this is transform. And I think, I'm not exactly certain, but I think once we've done that, if we break the source, for example, it'll still play correctly. And I, can we, I guess we can't break this. So the tracker always has to be within reference to the transform. But since we already tracked it, we can, we can break that source and everything will still work properly now. So I appreciate you watching this video. I hope it's been informative for you. Go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next video.